Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaykum dear viewers and welcome back to Women's View on Ahl Bay TV. You're watching Women's View live on Ahl Bay TV. Now we have about 25 minutes left of today's show until we wrap up today's show. Now as I said, I will be reading more of your emails out. The phone lines are still open for those who would like to express any um, comments. If they have any comments or would like to say anything regarding this topic, then please do hit the numbers on the screen. We'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, you can email us at womensview at ahlbay.tv. You can tweet us um, with any comments you may have. Um, as we said, today's topic is about the response to the film in the sense of Muslims, the 14-minute trailer that was uploaded on YouTube. Um, so I'm your host, Sahara al and today with me is Demi Nello. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. Um, we are getting some emails coming through now. We had interesting calls before the break as well. Um, this email was sent in. Say, Salam Alaikum, sisters. God bless you. I think if we respond violently, as we have seen in some places, it means we are depicting ourselves barbaric and thus proving what filmmakers wanted to show us. No violence should be in protest, no second opinion about it. But on the other hand, if we just ignore the movie and keep quiet about this idiotic film, as some people think this is the best way of response, it means we are accepting all the lies and abuses filmmakers portrayed about our beloved prophet, as we have no objection to it. Don't you think this is how the people altered the holy teachings of the Bible and the Torah and the life of the prophets, as nobody questioned them? We can respond in many logical and legal ways, for example, showing love for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by acting on Islam, peaceful protests, boycotting of US and Israeli products, um, and stop strengthening the economy. Muslim world demand that she lists all the different aspects people could take. Above all, we need um, union of Muslims in our response because without it, it wouldn't go unnoticed. I'm so sorry for being so long, but thanks a lot, Sister Zahra and Amina al TV for this platform. Sister Zahra Kazmi from Pakistan. Oh, assalamu alaikum. Yeah. <laughs> alaikum salam. But interesting, um, people, I know that it's, I, I posted a few things as well. Um, up online and people were saying just ignore the movie do you think by ignoring the movie as sister zahra from pakistan has said do you think ignoring the movie you are in a sense accepting a form of acceptance because it's a form of silence i know someone wrote on my facebook page that as well you are kind of accepting it and that's how teachings or ideologies begin to change i'm going to mention a couple of points here which i'm going to give you some forewarning they might not be popular in our community but i do think they're important to consider and both of them have to do with the media. No one, you know, we're not God. We don't look at the world and see everything that's happening. Basically, we see what the media presents to us. Now, with regards to this disaster of a film, I think one thing that does have to be questioned is why is it that an Egyptian television station chose to air it? It mm. wasn't broadcast by the Western media or propagated. I mean, again, God knows what happened behind the scenes, but overtly it was an Arabic station which put this on television. And one has to question what was going on with that. I mean, certainly, you know, unless... I had some reason to think this is being promoted by a Western country. I wouldn't put this sort of pornographic rubbish on, on television, even just out of respect for the prophet. So it was, it was uploaded on July, the 1st of July. Nobody, nobody knew about it until yeah. the Egyptian. I mean, if it had just stayed where it was, I, I don't think it really would have affected anyone. It's like the other caller was saying, you give this guy the attention that he wants. It just would have been his sin, his problem. Yeah. And you know, when they showed it in the theater the first time, there was, what, 10 people there, they said? I, I mean, I'm not, so it, it wasn't like it was out there mm. promoting stereotypes or, or falsehoods, uh, but it was the fact that it was shown on Arabic television that brought it to worldwide attention. Yeah. So. Uh, if, if we're going to talk about ourselves as Muslims as a whole, we have some responsibility. Now, I, I'm not saying every single one of us has the responsibility, but the station that put it on, th they're the ones who basically brought it to world attention, whether they intended to or not. I mean, I'm not blaming them for making the film, but I'm, I'm just saying it wasn't propagated by the West, yeah. overtly at least. If it was covert, I don't know. Uh, with regards to the portrayal of Muslims as barbaric and violent, uh, yes, there are some individuals of Muslim descent who engaged in some violent or barbaric act. 
act, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, again, I would say do appear to have been pre-planned and would have been carried out with or without the film. Uh, and it appears to have been an issue of convenience for them. Uh, I'm not condoning that. Uh, we, we don't believe this sort of violent response is appropriate, particularly in the school of Ahl al-Bayt, alayhim was salam. They very clearly did not resort to this sort of thing to deal with criticism or insults. They were very peaceful people. They were known for forgiveness, tolerance, dialogue, being the better person, and so on. Uh, so I'm not advocating uh, barbarism, so to speak. Uh, but I would just add here that, again, the media has a responsibility with regards to how Muslims are being portrayed, because they're the ones choosing to highlight these particular acts. Uh, and I read a very interesting study about the media uh, portrayals of this. And so as far as I know, not by a Muslim, I don't know for sure. But they are comparing the uh, filming of the Arab Spring protests to these. And they're saying with the protests uh, associated with the Arab Spring, they were actually filming the whole crowd. There were a lot of people there, and, and you could see them. But here they said basically they're going to smaller crowds of people, focusing on one or two, you know, a, a small group of men, usually, who are doing something a little bit interesting to make it look big, which is a trick we all know about. If you've taken a photograph ever, you want to make the, the room look full. You, you look for somewhere where there's a lot of people to give yeah. the illusion. So th there's a certain amount of presentation that's going on. It's not like when you watch something on television, you're just seeing what's going on. You're seeing how someone wishes to portray it. So it is important to remember there is some volition and some intent on the part of whatever news organization is filming, producing the news to portray what's happening in a certain light. There's one other point I do think is worth discussing because it's come up, and that is with regards to how people see us. And I think perhaps this is more relevant to the question of what should we do about this, what is our goal. There is a lot of concern among Muslims that this makes us look bad, makes us look violent, barbaric, etc. Now let me say just as a side point, because I don't want to be misunderstood here, uh, obviously we don't want to represent Islam in a bad light. We respect the Holy Prophet, we want to represent him well, we, and I'm not advocating any sort of barbaric or, or criminal acts. But I also have to question what is our concern with how the non-Muslim Western world is seeing us. Why is their opinion the one that's important to us? For example, I don't know anyone who's concerned about what people in China think about Muslims. You know, no one's saying, well, you know, the Chinese media is portraying Muslims as barbaric. Mm. Hey, why is this? Because China, well, it's actually quite economically a powerful country, but in terms of worldwide dominance, they're not the country that's in power. Mm. Primarily the country that's in power is America. And so a lot of people are concerned about how we look in the American and Western media, and I think it's important to be conscious of that and to ask ourselves, why are we concerned? And is our goal as Muslims simply to look good in front of uh, non-Muslim Westerners? Uh, and I'm not, I, again, I'm not trying to defend certain acts. I'm just saying, uh, as you know, I'm, I'm very big on self-definition and self-dignity. And our goal should be First of all, to look good before Allah, to, to do the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do, to do the things the Prophet would want us to do. Now that would include um, responding in an appropriate fashion. So there's no conflict here, but I'm just saying, uh, I'm not sure that being concerned about our image in front of certain populations is really something that should be our primary goal as Muslims, especially because, again, it, it's not like there is um, no sort of... Uh, take or spin being put on some of the news. Uh, so I, I think that's an important thing to keep, uh, to, to consider, and that this has also brought to light. Okay. Um, I actually had a caller that called in, but they, they didn't want to speak on that. But the question was, um, why did they make such a movie? Was there a reason behind it? And I, I'm just, I know we don't have much time, but just roughly. Yeah, so the guy, um, as the sister mentioned, uh, he was convicted of a number of crimes. Fraud, uh, I didn't know drug dealing, that's another one we can add to the list. He deceived this group of people. He was a crazy extremist. It seems like he had a personal agenda, or perhaps he had a small extremist group and they had agenda, and an agenda. That, that seems like what happened. Now, again, if there was anything beyond that, it's not apparent. But it, 
it has the appearance of being something which was basically someone's private issue. The reason why I'm just saying appearance, uh, perhaps because I'm just very cynical, but sometimes people who have these sort of extremist mentalities can be manipulated by someone else with an agenda. Yeah. But and anyway, it's, um, it does appear to be his personal work. And that's what the actress said. Yeah. I was watching one of her interviews, and she was saying the filmmaker told her to tell, her, tell the world it's just about me, and it's not about any of us in the crew, because I, I want responsibility for this. <laughs> so at, at the very least, he appears to be someone who is a criminal and who has a lot of problems. Yeah, that's true. His motives are unknown, but he clearly has an agenda. Um, moving on now, as we said, um, you know, everyone's talking about responding. What should we do in response to the film? Um, and many of us do claim that we do follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. Now, the question is, if Prophet Muhammad was here today and there was such an attack, what would he do? I and mean, shouldn't we do uh, essentially think about what, how he would respond and try to respond in the same way? How do you think we should respond? I'm actually going to say yes and no because I think there's two ways we can look at this. Mm -hmm. So I know I got everyone's attention with the no part. <laughs> now, obviously, as, as Muslims, we believe, well, we are supposed to believe anyway, we should follow the sunnah of the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So, yes, as people or as nations, we should respond in the manner in which the Holy Prophet and his Ahlul Bayt showed us. Uh, and there's a professor by the name of Omid Safi in the United States uh, who's written a number, well, he's written a couple of articles explaining this. In fact, I think one of them was what would the Prophet Muhammad have done, something like that. And he makes the point, it's, uh, he says it's not just what Muhammad would do, it's what he already did. This is not theoretical. During the Holy Prophet's life, he was insulted a lot, degraded, mocked, physically attacked, his companions were tortured. and. He had, there were a lot of different types of attacks and, and mockery directed towards him. So it's not something that we have to guess what would he have done. And same thing with Ahlul Bayt, too. They were under attack, and we see how they'd responded, which was always, <coughs> pardon me, being, being the better person, uh, being patient, being tolerant, being merciful, being forgiving. As the Holy Quran says, uh, When the ignorant people say something to you, they say peace in, in response. You, you don't lower yourself and get into a mudslinging match. And indeed, this was one of the things that did convince people that the prophet was a prophet, something very much missing in the trailer. Uh, so this, on a personal level, uh, or even on a group level, uh, is a good mindset to have that we are not going to degrade ourselves to the level of someone who would make this sort of film. It doesn't mean we have to be silent about it, uh, but this is something that's been echoed by a lot of the callers and really people in uh, all over the world. I would say most Muslims that I have heard from have been distressed by the uh, the uh, minority of violent responses to the film. They don't think that's the right way to go about dealing with it. Uh, so that's with regards to the sunnah and how we should act. Uh, but I want to add something else in there because I do think it tends to get lost. Uh, and I'm not sure why this is getting lost, particularly among Muslims. And that is, we're also not dealing with the exact type of situation because this is not just about a religious insult. Mm. Uh, there are also much bigger issues that are going on here. And the analogy I would make, uh, which again, I'm, I'm not sure why it's not obvious, uh, is that yes, the, the Holy Prophet was under attack personally. His followers were under attack. They were a persecuted movement. Uh, but the Arabian Peninsula was not in the kind of situation where the Arabic language was being destroyed by, say, another language coming in as, for example, in the subcontinent, the English language uh, displaced a number of languages. Um, there weren't foreign military bases all over the Arabian Peninsula. People weren't uh, channeling tons of money to a satellite state to drop bombs on the Arabian Peninsula. And then the film comes from somewhere and everyone you know, gets upset. You know, we, we, so I'm saying that there's a limit to the analogy. Now, I'm not saying all of these geopolitical realities uh, mean that we should have a barbaric response. Don't get me wrong on that point. But what I'm saying is um, I think it's very simplistic just to say uh, how would, would the prophet have responded with regards to insults and, and not look at some of the real issues here. And I do think uh, the real issues, some of the very real issues uh, 
again, there are military issues, the, the drone strikes and, and wars in, in certain countries. And the, unfortunately, some of the media that's come from certain countries, not to name names, has really reinforced that. When you hear a presidential candidate in some countries saying they murdered our ambassador and, and this and that, and it's like, okay, well, how many people have been killed in, in these other events? But it's as if their lives are not important. These are the issues here. And <coughs> Uh, I think they need to be considered as part of the bigger picture instead of just reducing it to, well, this is a religious insult. Uh, which, again, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that from Muslims, to be honest. Uh, although it is important to remember the Sunnah, and that is what we should do, to be following the Holy Prophet. Definitely. I know we, ha we don't have much time left, but um, in terms of why, why do you think there, there has been such a violent reaction from some Muslims? This is a very complicated question. I'm not sure that anyone really knows everything that's going on, especially when we're talking about things happening in other countries. As I mentioned, it does appear the initial attack was an attack by a group of militants who, who had a plan to do a certain thing. And there's been a lot of fighting in Libya. This is an unstable region in transition. So there is that to be taken into consideration. Uh, as we know, there is a reality there are some groups of violent people in the Muslim world, just like there are in any other part of the world. This is not something limited to Muslims, although we sometimes see it portrayed as such. Uh, there's, in particular, there are some Salafi-oriented groups which are have very uh, extreme violent tendencies. Uh, killing Shia happens to be one of them. So it's something we're very familiar with, unfortunately. Um, so yes, there are some people who have certain uh, things they'd like to do, and this is how they do it. Now, do they represent Muslims as a whole? I don't think so, no. But, but this is one aspect of it. Uh, for example, with regards to the uh, protests in Australia, where there was uh, a bit of uh, violent conflict too, uh, apparently it was a Salafi group which got involved in that uh, physical fighting, as opposed to just simply peacefully protesting. Uh, so that, that's one thing. Uh, for some people, I mean, I've heard some people say this might really just be part of the political instability of what's been going on. And in the context of some of the um, you know, protests against some of the governments, I don't know. Also, another thing to keep in mind is with regards to the media coverage coming from the West, um, there is a difference between anger and violence. Uh, I would define violence as harming someone. Um, but we are being portrayed as being barbaric for being angry. And that's something which I think is, honestly, it's just not fair. If there's some injustice that takes place here, let's say they have a protest over health care or minimum wage, minimum salaries, racial discrimination. If people get together and chant and hold signs and march, this is not something the media is going to condemn and say, oh, look at these barbaric people. They're chanting about national health care. They're, they're so violent. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of this sort of thing is being portrayed as violence and barbarism. And it's a bit like, you know, let's say there's someone in front of you who's getting beaten up, and they get upset about it. And the person who's sitting there comfortably says, oh, what's wrong with you? You're so upset. You're so backwards. Again, it's a very non-empathetic sort of reaction, and it's very easy for someone who's in a secure and privileged position to make fun of other people who are suffering and uh, responding. So that's how I would liken some of these uh, responses, too. But I would say the issue. I mean, it is a very complicated question, and I really don't think we can generalize in this sort of situation, except to say I, I think there's a lot of things that have been going on, yeah. uh, which have been painted with the same brush. Definitely. I know we have a, a few minutes left, like three minutes, but just before we go off, because I've heard this argument quite a lot, there's a lot of people that have been written on the internet saying, well, it may be factual, there may be some factual points within the film, whether we agree or not. But wh what would be your response to that? Those who say that, the movie is actually based on some factual points. I know that's not the case, but how would you respond to such people? We have about three minutes left. That's actually a very complex issue. It's, it's a short trailer, but they packed a lot of stuff into it. I would say there's a few different things going on. As I mentioned earlier, there's some stuff which I, I think, it, as far as I know, it's complete fiction, such as you know, the Prophet was illegitimate. I really don't know where they took that from. There may be a book that says something somewhere. 
Uh, then there are things that you might find in some book somewhere, which reminds us of the truism that just because something was written in a book at some time during history does not make it true. Uh, generally, we understand this, but unfortunately, uh, sometimes perhaps some people in our community don't uh, understand this uh, enough. Um, and some of the things that were mentioned in the movie might have been alluded to in some book or another. Keeping in mind this book may have been written several hundred years after the prophetic period, that doesn't make it true, but there might be a reason why it's been pulled into this. There are some things that are just misunderstandings uh, or people just making fun of something which we do believe, like the jizya, for example. Yes, we do believe in the jizya, uh, the uh, tax on non-Muslim citizens in an Islamic state. Uh, we don't, now we don't view it as extortion. Uh, it's generally viewed as compensation for being excluded from military service and so forth. It's something we have a different view on that they are making fun of. So I'll give him points for the jizya thing. It, it is something real, even though the portrayal was quite, uh, it was ridiculous. And then there's the, the issues that we as Muslims, we need to take a closer look at. And it is kind of sad that, in a way, when something like this is made, we can't take a closer look at it. Because when we're so busy defending ourselves, we can't engage in self-reflection if we feel like we're under attack. One of the big issues that came up was the age of Aisha when she got married. Now, I know we've had lengthy discussions about this before, but there are a lot of Muslims who hold very strongly to the view that she was a child when she got married. There's a lot of evidence against that, but there are a lot of Muslims who cling to that view, and th this is the result, this sort of movie. Seems like we've ended up in just a very uh, complex issue, but that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us today. As we said, we have so much more to discuss. I'm so sorry for, for having to cut the um, show very short, but we have to go off. Thank you very much for all the callers that called in, those who have emailed in and sent their tweets tweets. We thank Stemina and Laws for joining us today. That's all we have time for. If you want more information about this, then you can log on to our Facebook. I'll try to upload some notes from today's discussion on there for those who have want to read on further. That's all for today and inshallah see you next week Thursday for another live show. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.